I am perhaps the oldest artist in the world. And yes, I am a dead man, but in many senses I am a very young man. And this is what I want you to be. Young. Young all your life and in your death. And to say things to the world that are true. The really rich people have cornered all the money, Bartos said, in explaining the huge sums iconic works command today. This is peanuts for them. End quote. Considering his naysayers, Mr. Murillo said, if I were looking from the other side, I would be skeptical, too. I came to this by simply working, he stressed. It's the market, and that has nothing to do with me. I'm just trying to keep things normal. I've had to live below my means for so long that I'm keeping it that way. I have a wife and a four-year-old daughter. I'm very close to my parents and my sister. Asked whether he's afraid that, like so many artists before him, his star will fall as quickly as it has risen, he answered, I am just working and trying to tune out the rest. We have art so that we may not perish by the truth. And here is Barbara Guggenheim's story. At a recent dinner, a Frenchman of my acquaintance told a German he had never met, You have a Mike Kelly? I have a Mike Kelly. This meant, you have a million dollars to piss away? I too have a million dollars to piss away. You got to the head of the line? I too got to the head of the line. We can be friends. It's a secret handshake. If all it takes to get a membership in this elite club is several million dollars, for people who have tens or hundreds of millions, it's cheap, at twice the price. And the more esoteric works they buy, the better. Hanging and preserving an expensive piece no one understands, provides not only the aura of wealth, but also the impression that the owner is one of the rare intellectuals who, really, gets it. <laughs> 